Dennis is a talented architect. He's designed a unique skyscraper, and right now, the construction works are starting. His boss asked Dennis to show around a group of specialists from a competitor company. The only condition was that they weren't allowed to take any photos. Dennis did as he was told, but when the group was going to leave, he asked security to detain one man. The architect claimed he had been taking photos during the tour around the site. How did he understand it? The man was carrying an umbrella. He kept pointing it at different objects, asking lots of questions. But the sky is cloudless. What does he need an umbrella for? A camera must be hidden there. Nathan came to his friend Zachary, who worked in a museum. Look what I've got! A priceless manuscript that was written more than a thousand years ago! Zachary looked through the manuscript and realized his friend had been fooled. Does anything in this text strike you as strange? If we talk about the dates before the Common Era, they should be in reverse order. The original text would read, King Alfred V ruled the country from 1320 to 1290 BCE. Detective Aaron Jones got a call late at night. It was his neighbor. I've heard a very loud noise coming from the house next door. I'm afraid to go there to investigate alone, but what if something has happened? When Aaron and his neighbor arrived at the place, they saw the entrance door open. They ran inside and found the house owner, Mr. Anderson, on the floor of his bedroom, tied and moaning in pain. He said he had been in bed reading a book, and then a man in a black mask broke into his room and hit him on the head. Then he tied Mr. Anderson, took all his money and other valuables, and disappeared. Detective Jones didn't believe the man. Why? Look at his bed. There isn't even a wrinkle on the cover. It's unlikely that the thief made the bed after tying Mr. Anderson, which means the man is lying. Look at this group of people and try to figure out who the man's wife is. It's the woman in purple. Both she and the biker are wearing matching wedding rings. Joan took part in an experiment, testing her logical thinking and analytical skills. She had to crack riddles to get to the next level. Right now, the girl is locked in a small room. The door will open automatically once she figures out the riddle written on a piece of paper. Which principle is this sequence based on? 8549176320 The numbers are lined up based on the alphabetical order of the first and second letters of their name. 8, 5, 4, 9, and so on. Joan managed to get out of the room and is ready for the next task. This time, the girl needs to join all the blue points on the screen, but she's allowed to use only three lines. How can she do it? She's drawn a triangle. Its three sides include all the dots. The next level is rather scary. Joan is locked in a room that's slowly filling with water. This process will only stop when the girl figures out how this equation can be true. 29 minus 1 equals 30. Even under these stressful conditions, Joan managed to crack the puzzle. She replaced the numbers with the Roman numerals XXIX minus I equals XXX. Then she removed the one I from 29, XXIX, and got 30, XXX. Wow, this was a riddle with a lot of excess. And finally, Joan is given the last test. She needs to figure out which object is the odd one and doesn't belong to the group. Can you do the same? It's the first object. It's the only one that doesn't have any individual traits. The second object is uniquely round. The third doesn't have a red line around it. 
the fourth shape is a different color, and the fifth one is smaller than the rest. Two cars are driving through the city. They both started their journey at the same time. The green one is moving at a speed of 30 miles per hour. The yellow one is faster, its speed is 50 miles per hour. And still, at one point, the green car comes across the yellow car. How is it possible? Well, the cars were traveling in opposite directions. Look at this teenager and two women behind his back. Who is his real teacher? The answer is in the reflection behind their backs. You can see that both women are holding pointers. But in the mirror, only one of them has it. She is the real teacher. Two men are going to fill their watering cans with water from the river. Who will bring more water? The spout of the older man's watering can is situated lower than the spout of the other man's can. And the level of water can't be higher than the spout. It means the younger man will bring more water. Evelyn wants to visit one unusual restaurant. But to get there, one must know the password. The girl hides around the corner to figure it out. She sees a man come up to the security guard. The guard says, 12. The man answers, 6, and is allowed to come in. Then a young woman approaches the security guard. He says, 6, and she answers, 3. Evelyn is sure she has figured out the pattern. She comes up to the security guard and hears him say, 4. The girl says, 2, and isn't allowed to enter. Why? The password is always different. It's the number of letters in the word the security guard says. Like the word 12 has 6 letters. That's why Evelyn should have answered 4. A manager of the most luxurious sea resort in the area called the police. She said someone had stolen a set of very expensive monogrammed bed linen. Three guests left the hotel that morning. Mr. Sam Taylor, Mrs. Amanda Martin, and Mr. Michael Smith. The police detained one of the guests and, indeed, found the bed linen in their suitcase. How did the detectives figure out which person was the thief? As you can see, the hotel's name is Morning Star. This means the monogram on the bed linen was MS. The only person with the same initials is Mr. Michael Smith. Hannah called her friend, Detective Evelyn Marks, and asked her to come as soon as possible. While the woman was away walking with her dog, someone had gotten into her house and stolen her laptop. Hannah was sure it was her neighbor, Jeremy. Evelyn went to question the man, but he wasn't at home. She decided to wait for him in her car. Soon, she saw Jeremy opening his entrance door. I went fishing early in the morning. Don't you see that I've just come home? But Hannah didn't believe Jeremy and took him to the police station. Why? The guy was wearing white sneakers, but it's been raining since early morning. If he was out fishing, how can his shoes look so clean? Detective Jacob Robinson was spending his vacation in the mountains. One morning, he found out someone had stolen a big sum of money from the owner of the hotel where he was staying. Jacob offered the man his help and questioned all the hotel guests. Emma said, I felt unwell and spent all the evening in my room. Lewis explained to the detective that he had only arrived at 2 a.m. and had gone straight to bed. And Simon said, I've got friends living here in the village. I went to visit them and returned in the morning just an hour ago. Detective Robinson immediately realized who was guilty. Do you know it? It was Simon. Look at the snow around the hotel. It looks untouched with no footprints whatsoever. Then how did Simon get back from the village? Mrs. Williamson told her daughter Maya she wasn't allowed to see her boyfriend Luke until she prepared for her exam. After that, the woman went shopping. 
When she was coming back, she spotted Luke, who was walking along the street. When Mrs. Williamson returned home, she immediately realized Maya had seen her boyfriend. How did the woman figure it out? When she was leaving, there were five roses in the vase on the kitchen table. Now, there were only four. And when she saw Luke, he was carrying a rose. Private Detective Sean was waiting for his client in the lobby of a large hotel. The client was running very late. That's why, to entertain himself, Sean was observing the hotel guests. He noticed a man at the reception desk. He had four suitcases, but refused when the porter offered to help him with the baggage. The man went to his room, only to reappear five minutes later with the largest of his suitcases. Half an hour later, he returned without the suitcase and went to his room. Soon, he rushed to the reception shouting, My suitcases! They're gone! Sean introduced himself and, together with the hotel management, joined the man in his room. Something seemed off about the guy, and soon, the detective realized he was a fraudster. What did the man do? Each of his suitcases was smaller than the previous one. The man packed all of them into the largest suitcase and left with it. And then, he pretended someone had stolen his things. Detective Taylor was chasing a dangerous criminal. Suddenly, the man entered a hospital. But there are hundreds of rooms there. Luckily, it was raining, and the criminal left footprints on the floor. The detective followed them and got into a small room. There were three people there. All of them were covered in bandages from head to toe. But one of them was a fake patient. Who? It's the man in the middle. He doesn't have a medical chart next to his bed. Meg was working hard all morning. She decided to have a lunch break and headed to the parking lot. But when Meg approached her car, she faced an unpleasant surprise. Someone had poured blue paint all over the vehicle. Meg found three witnesses and questioned them. Lily, the company's designer, said she'd been eating her taco on the office balcony when it happened. The financial director, Chuck, had a long business call with investors. And Sheila, the cleaner, said, I've been cleaning the toilet all morning. One of the guys is a liar. Can you guess who? Lily, there's an unpacked taco on her desk. Also, her hands are stained with blue paint. Yeah, that's a pretty big clue there. Meg's best friend, Rosie, invited her to a birthday party. In the evening, Meg went to the kitchen and saw Rosie unconscious on the floor. She called the police and they arrived very quickly. There are five people in the house. Their names are Peter, Kelly, Dan, Phil, and Donna. Each one is a close friend of Rosie. Officers searched the space and found these three numbers on the floor. Rosie wrote them with her lipstick before passing out. After seeing this clue, officers arrested one of the guests. Can you guess who? They arrested Dan. The numbers 12, 4, and 11 correspond to the names of the months December, April, and November. Meg went to the office kitchen to get some coffee. She wanted to add milk to her drink, so she opened the fridge to find it. Meg discovered four different milk packages on the shelf, but only one of them is safe to use. Can you guess which one? The first milk is very swollen, which means it has turned sour. A note on the second package says, stay away. And the fourth milk is ancient. It expired in 1995. So Meg should choose the third milk. And maybe someone should clean out the office fridge. Nina purchased a pair of shoes and gave Tom a $100 bill. The price of these shoes is $30. But Tom didn't have enough change. So he brought the $100 bill to the neighboring shop and asked his friend Sam to change the bill. 
Then Tom returned to the shoe shop and gave Nina $70. Nina took the change and the shoes and left. Later that day, Sam brought the $100 banknote back to Tom. He said, this bill is fake. Give me back my money. Tom had to use his own money to return his debt to Sam. So, how much money did Tom lose? First of all, he lost the $30 shoes. Also, he gave Nina $70. Therefore, he still had $30 from the changed $100 bill. So when Sam asked him to return the money, Tom paid him back those $30 plus $70 from his pocket. So Tom had lost a total of $100. See Tom cry. Billy works as a night watchman at a large bank. One night, he heard strange noises from the bank vault and went to check it out. Unfortunately, inside the vault, he faced three criminals. All three guys were wearing masks. But Billy noticed an imposter among them right away. Can you see him too? The guy on the right doesn't have gloves. This way, he would have left his fingerprints all over the place. So he's probably an undercover cop. Bella is a famous blogger. She took this picture during a running contest and posted it in her stories. Her followers commented that one of these guys is playing unfairly. Can you guess which one? The person on the right isn't sweating at all. Something's definitely wrong here. Ryan was hanging out in a cafe with his best friend David. They ordered some food and drinks, and after the meal, Ryan said, Let's play a game. If you crack my riddle, I'll pay. But if you fail, you'll pay. David agreed. Here's the task. He needs to remove a couple of toothpicks to make this equation correct. Can you help David out? Here's the solution. Ms. Green is a college teacher. One of her instructors, Rosie, has been cheating on tests multiple times. One day, Ms. Green lost her patience and told Rosie, If you tell me a lie, I will expel you from college. And if you tell me the truth, I'll still expel you. So what do you say? What can Rosie say to prevent her withdrawal? She should say, I am telling lies. This phrase will create a paradox, because it can't be a lie and truth at the same time. Jane was performing in a singing contest in a famous concert hall. Her singing was very good, and she made the judges cry. But suddenly, all the lights went down. Someone turned off the electricity in the entire building. The contest manager questioned three suspects. Jane's rival singer, Tilda, said, I was visiting a coffee shop on the seventh floor when suddenly it became very dark. I had to use a flashlight on my phone to get out. Sarah, the cleaning lady, said, I was washing the windows far away from the electrical panels. And Frank, the guard, said, I'm so sorry, I didn't look at the security cameras because I had a personal emergency call. Who's lying? Tilda. This concert hall doesn't have a seventh floor. Peter landed in a foreign country. He opened a taxi app on his phone to get to his hotel. Unfortunately, the app didn't work. So Peter just went outside, hoping to find a driver. At the parking lot, he noticed three free cars. All three drivers were eager to give Peter a ride. Which driver should he choose? Look at the first taxi. There's a puddle of oil under this car. Probably not the safest option. As for the third car, 
it only has three wheels. So Peter should pick the second driver. Alex is an adventurous traveler. One day, he was walking alone in the jungle and got caught in a trap. Now he's hanging on a tree tied upside down. The rope is anchored in the ground. There's a candle burning below the rope. Very soon, the rope will burn away. Also, there's a hungry tiger under the tree waiting for Alex to fall. Now, what would you suggest to help Alex survive in this difficult situation? Alex should sing the happy birthday song. The tiger will blow the candle out to celebrate, and Alex will get a chance to escape. Now, don't complain to me, I just read these off the script. Mia came home from work late at night as usual. She lives with three roommates. When Mia entered her bedroom, she noticed someone had stained her favorite carpet. Mia got furious and questioned her roommates. Jessica said, that's not my fault, I've spent all day chilling in my boyfriend's house. Helen replied, today I entered your room only once to bring clean laundry, the carpet was okay. And Fiona said, I haven't been to your room for ages, I studied in the library all day. Can you guess who stained the carpet? Fiona. Take a look at her hands. The color of her nail polish matches the stains on the carpet perfectly. Will has just moved to San Francisco. He needed an apartment to stay in for at least a year, so he searched online. He found three options and liked them all equally. Will went to check out all three offers one by one. After that, he found out that two of the three offers were scams. What about you? Can you see anything suspicious in these advertisements? Take a look at the sign on the second house. It says that this house will be demolished in two weeks. But Will was searching for long-term rent. The third apartment is on the eighth floor. But that's impossible, because this building only has seven floors. Therefore, Will should choose the first option. Someone locked Henry in a creepy basement. He looked around and noticed three ways out, but all of them were dangerous. The first passage is freezing. Anyone who enters it will turn into ice. The second is guarded by a huge cougar that hasn't eaten for three years. And there's a massive fire behind the third door. What passage should Henry choose? The second one. The animal hasn't eaten for three years, so it's not dangerous anymore. Kind of shriveled, actually. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.